Hello and welcome to Indian Writers Forum and News Click. I am going to be in conversation with Guki Vathiongo, who is probably one of the best known African writers in the world today. He is the author of more than 40 books, 30 to 40 books, he says. He doesn't remember the exact the number, exact do number, you? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and his work has been translated into virtually every uh, important language of the world, some 60 odd languages. It's a pleasure having you here, Gugi. Uh, how has your visit to India so far been? been? Great. This is actually my second visit to India. Mm -hmm. I was first here in 1996 mm -hmm. and to New Delhi also in 1996. So this is my return to my second visit to both India and New Delhi and it's been great. Uh, India features quite a lot in your writings, doesn't it? Yes, actually it does, as well as in my life actually, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that I come from Kenya. In Kenya we have a, a big uh, Kenyan community of Indian origins, yeah, so. In almost all your novels and plays, there's some Indian character who appears. But uh, in, your, in your last novel, which is your magnum opus in a sense, Wizard of the Crow, India really features through the entire novel in a very significant way. Could you speak a little bit about I, I, uh, what I, <coughs> you know, I, I'd always been very concerned that uh, although, we, although Africa and Asia have a long history of connections, particularly the coastline of Africa, East Africa, and the coastline of India and China, with many years of connections and so on, but uh, of trade and cultural connections. But these days we tend to write as if we are more connected to Europe. So it's as if Europe connects us, you know, uh, Africa, Europe, Asia, Europe. But I wanted to resume, to resuscitate the other connection, which had always been there. That is Africa, to Asia, Asia to Africa, uh, instead of this meeting at the triangle, tip of the triangle, which is Europe. Uh. So, um, but in my last novel, so, so in my last novel, I was very conscious of that, Wizard of the Crow. And in order to bring India in uh, structurally, uh, I had one of the main characters get his education in India. In Chennai, in fact. Chennai, in fact. You know, uh, so I had to do a lot of work, study <laughs> the, a bit of the history of Chennai, the geography of Chennai, you know, uh, and I was helped by many Indian scholars like uh, Alexander, uh, like Mina Alexander, Alexander you know, Susan Daru. Uh, actually, Mina Alexander's sister, Elizabeth, who I never met. But she sent me maps and so on, so it's, you know... Oh, that's marvellous. There's yeah. also a reference to the Mahabharata in the novel. Yeah, and then I came, at that time, when I was writing it, in the middle of writing my novel, I came across, you know, uh, Mahabharata. And I became very, very interested in Mahabharata. Uh, particularly in the character of Ekrivia. The one Eklavya. who... Yeah, the one who is able to... Uh, outdo uh, Arjuna right. in, 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 archery. in archery, but who ends up being disabled, despite that uh, Drona never really taught him, he taught himself, but even with that, he's disabled, so that he cannot compete with the sons and daughters of the powerful. So that theme of disabling the regular guy, the working person, or whatever, was very important to me. Uh, or disabling people of the third world, you know. They do the work, they produce, and yet they don't always bear the fruits of what they produce. Or even get punished for actually producing or being made uh, 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 unable to do things consciously, okay? So, uh, like getting, like losing their languages, which is, contains information, history, technology, skills, and so on. So, 
that character became very important to me. It's a very important part of uh, uh, of the argument that you make in your in your more recent book, Secure the Base, yeah. um, about imperialism, about colonialism, um, about language, about the inequitable distribution of the world's resources, yeah. um, and so on. It's it's not every day that one finds a, a fiction author who's so trenchantly opposed to imperialism and is unafraid to name imperialism as imperialism. Yeah. Um, would you speak a little bit yeah. about that? The, the, the question is, I, I, <clears throat> I really honestly believe that it's good that people of different cultures and histories, you know, uh, make contact with each other, you know. Uh, and it's very important. There are a lot of these we give and we can take from other people. But that contact must not be that of the rider and the horse. Okay, that's not the contact we are talking about, you know. Uh, and so, uh, what, okay, in every context of oppressor oppressed, the oppressor always tries to destabilize the oppressed relation to their own body. <laughs> the body actually is very, very important, you know, and everywhere, wherever there are structures of oppression, the first thing you do, those who in part try to destabilize the oppressed relation to their own body. Yeah? You know, you know, they use terms like, you know, you are not born this way or this way or you are ugly. So it's really all they are doing is very simple, is to destabilize one's relationship to one's base so that they are not able to resist because they are thinking oh my body you know my base you know my language you know what's not as good as or oh, my community is not as good as or oh, i was born this way or that way right yeah the moment you start having that questioning your own to your own base in a negative way the <laughs> you're almost half defeated before you even begin to struggle, okay? So the, the thing is to claim our base. Yeah? And our base actually begins with our own body. Yeah? To claim that as our starting point. And my starting point is no worse or better than anybody's starting point, as starting points, right? So you don't want to tell me, let's go to the stars, but you must come and stand where I am. Okay, I tell you, no, it's something. you stand where you are, I stand where I am, let us meet. <laughs> so I really believe very strongly in the question of the base, whether it's of one's body, one's language, one's history, one's culture, you know, okay? And if, even if a language, for instance, is spoken by five people, those people have a right to that language as their base. But from their base, they connect, connect to other bases. They can uh, connect to the nation, other national communities, and they can connect to other communities in the world. There's nothing that prevents with your base. If you're strongly rooted in your base, actually, you're in a better position to connect to the world. Mm -hmm.